In this video, I'm gonna figure out if it's possible to hack a Tesla with a Flipper Zero. In my last video, I went over how to install the Extreme firmware on your Flipper Zero and then how to use that firmware to use the BLE spam in order to lock up mobile phones. And a lot of people seem to like that video, and I've been playing with the Flipper Zero on my own time and trying to learn about it and figure out what to do with it. So I figured I might as well make some videos about it as I go as I'm learning things and figuring out how to do cool stuff with it. I might as well show you guys what I'm doing. And if you start doing some Google searches and trying to figure out what to do with the Flipper Zero, you come up with a lot of results where people are asking, what can you actually do with it? Is it useful for anything? Actually, can you actually hack into things? And one common thing that people are always trying to ask about, is it possible to hack, are Teslas. And I happen to have access to a Tesla, so I figured I might as well see how much you can do with the Flipper Zero to actually hack a Tesla. Just for reference, I will be using the same dev build of the Extreme firmware that I installed in the previous video. So some of the features that I'm using in this video may not be available on your Flipper Zero if you're using a different firmware, but all the things that I'm going to talk about are available in that dev build from the Extreme firmware that I installed in the last video. Since Teslas are very connected cars and they have a lot of wireless technologies and things in them, there are a lot of things that you could go down a rabbit hole trying to figure out how to hack, but I figured I might as well start with the big one that everyone would like dream of being able to do. And that's that thing you see in movies that just like hacker magic, where you like press a button and then you can just get in a car and drive off without needing the keys. And at first glance, I thought this might actually be possible because the Flipper Zero has the ability to read and store and then replay NFC signals. If you don't know what NFC is, it's basically just like a wireless signal. And you know, when you use a card to buy something at a store and instead of swiping your card or putting it in for the chip reader, you just tap it on the little point of sale, that's using NFC. This is a canceled card, by the way. It does not actually have any connection to any of my actual bank accounts or anything like that. I'm just using it for demonstration purposes. But it does have NFC enabled, and if I use my Flipper Zero and I go to the NFC reader, and then I read the card, and then I place the Flipper Zero on top of the card, it actually reads the debit card number and the expiration date. And this actually works with other types of cards too, not just debit cards. For example, sometimes you'll see key cards that get you into buildings or like a little dongle that you use to open a safe or something. They will use NFC. And it's actually possible to save that information by putting that card on the Flipper Zero. And then you can then store it in the Flipper Zero and then replay it and then just place the Flipper Zero itself on whatever the reader is to unlock the door or the safe or whatever it is. And if you didn't know, Teslas actually have a key card that uses NFC. I think most Tesla drivers actually use their phone as their key. It has like this whole built-in thing in the app where it will automatically detect you when you get close and unlock for you. And then when you walk away, it'll automatically lock. But they do give you this key card where if you don't have your phone with you or you want someone else to drive your car for you, you can use this key card. And it actually shows you on the back of the card that you just place that card on the reader at the door and then that will unlock the door and you can get in. And then there's another place inside the car where you place it to actually be able to start the car and drive off. Just to demonstrate how this works, I'm down in the garage with this Tesla Model 3 and it's locked right now. If I try to open the door, it's locked, doesn't work, but then I take the key card and I put it right here on the door. It unlocks it. I can open the door, get in, drive away. So since I know that the Tesla key card works on NFC and I know that I can emulate and replay NFC signals with my Flipper Zero, so it stands to reason that I should be able to read the signal from the Tesla key card and then store it on the Flipper Zero and then replay the signal from the Flipper Zero at the Tesla and it should work just like the key card. So let's see if it actually works in practice. I'm gonna to go to NFC and I'm going to read and I'm gonna put the card on the back of the Flipper Zero and it does read the card. It gets the UID, it gets a lot of other information and then I can save the UID and I'm just going to name it Tesla. And now let's go back down to the Tesla and see if we can replay that signal and see if it works to unlock the car. Now that I have that NFC signal from the key card stored in my Flipper Zero, now I'm gonna to go to that signal again and I'm going to click emulate UID and now it's emulating it and I'm going to hold it over that same place where I held the key earlier 
and I'm going to use all different sides of it, trying to make sure that there's no chance I'm missing the signal, but I'm not getting that beep that I got earlier when I used the key card, and it never unlocks the door. So it turns out that just storing the signal from the card and then replaying it won't actually unlock a Tesla. It turns out there's some sort of Tesla key card protocol, and it seems like it's some sort of Java card with a Java applet that's installed on it. I haven't done a ton of research on this. I've just done some very surface level Google searches and read a couple little articles about it. But suffice it to say that there is apparently some sort of extra layers of security going on here, preventing this exact type of attack that I was trying to do, where you can just read a signal, replay it, and then get into the car. There's some sort of extra authentication happening here. But there is one pretty easy little thing you can do with a Tesla and your Flipper Zero that is kind of cool, kind of dumb, but it's something you can do. If you look under the sub gigahertz menu and you go down to saved and you go down to vehicles, there's a folder that says Tesla. And when you look in that folder, you'll see a bunch of different signals that have been stored in here. And you'll notice that some of them have EU in their name. And then some of them have different sort of frequencies listed. That's because this signal that I'm about to talk about is actually different based on region. So the signal that is used by a Tesla in America will be different than a signal that is used by a Tesla in like Sweden or somewhere. But this signal will actually pop open the charge cap on the Tesla. I believe this is related to superchargers actually. Again, I haven't done that much research on this, but from what I understand, I believe there is some sort of signal that a supercharger can send to a Tesla that will unlock the charge cap. And this is actually a signal that you can replay and it will pop open that charge cap even if the car is locked. So I'm gonna go back down to the garage and I'm gonna demonstrate this for you real quick. Now when I go under the sub gigahertz menu and I go to saved and then vehicles, Tesla, and then I go down to the Tesla charge AM270 signal and I click send, the charge port opens. So in conclusion, my goal for this video was to figure out, is it possible to hack a Tesla with a flipper zero? And the answer that I came up with was no, but kinda. As far as I can figure out, it doesn't seem possible, at least not without some extensive research and probably some extra hardware to have that movie hacker moment where you just press the button and then you get in the car and drive away without having keys. But you can replay that signal to pop open the charge cap, which is more just like a little prank thing and isn't going to actually cause any damage. And you're certainly not going to be able to steal a car with that. And you can store the signal from the key card and you can uh, maybe save that signal and edit it with some uh, different sort of software. And maybe you can do some extra research with that signal and try to find something else about the whole protocol. And maybe one day you can do something with that. That's probably beyond my expertise. But sadly, I was not able to have my Mr. Robot slash watchdogs moment where I just hit a button and drive away in a stolen car. That's going to be all for this video though. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it and uh, testing this stuff out and playing with the Flipper Zero. I've been having a lot of fun playing with this thing and trying to figure out different things it can do and using different functions of different firmwares and things. So if I come up with any other different projects or things that I see during my research, maybe I'll make a video of it. And if there are any ideas anyone else has that you want me to test out with it, post it in the comments and maybe I'll make a video. 